All right, people, let's discuss Eddie Redmayne. I'm very excited for this episode because of the intersectionality and the parallels with the importance of trans representation. We're going to start with Eddie Redmayne and the theory of everything. This is a film that, while it might appear inoffensive and not overtly problematic, it can still send dangerous messages that perpetuate stereotypes and prejudices through a portrayal or performance of disability. The ultimate goal of Eddie Redmayne's performance is to contort his body convincingly enough where the audience goes, whoa, I really believed he was crippled. However, as we see Eddie Redmayne off screen, accepting prestigious awards for his role as Stephen Hawking and his role as a trans woman in The Danish Girl, audiences then see a cisgendered, able-bodied man walking up to the stage to accept these awards. There then seems to be a collective sigh of relief and sense of reassurance when the audience sees that it was all an illusion. And in many ways, the societal fear and stigma surrounding disability just becomes an even more so prevalent issue in society. If you haven't watched it already, I highly recommend a, the new documentary on Netflix, Disclosure. I can't deny the fascinating parallels in the implications of misrepresentation. Jen Richards, a transgender writer, producer, actress, and activist, comments on Eddie Redmayne's performance, emphasis on performance, as a trans woman in The Danish Girl. She says, and I quote, the public thinks of trans women as men with really great makeup and a costume. And we see this reinforced every time we see a man who's played a trans woman off screen. This has been going on for 40 years. Having cis men play trans women, in my mind, is a direct link to the violence against trans women. And when she speaks on transgender actresses, she says, when you see these women off screen still as women, it completely deflates this idea that they're somehow men in disguise. And when speaking on Eddie Redmayne's performance specifically, Jen Richards says, when someone like Eddie Redmayne, who admittedly might give really great performance as a trans woman, what's remarkable about his performance is the way that he's been able to manifest those feminine parts of himself into a convincing trans performance. But it reduces that person, in this case who was a real per person, to a performance of transness and femininity, rather than as a whole person of whom transness is one aspect of. From this, I, I gather that rather than perform transness, rather than perform disability, having trans actors and having disabled actors allows for a performance of truth, providing audiences a more holistic, perhaps more authentic, genuine narrative on what it's like to be a trans individual or what it's like to be a disabled individual. Now, there can be exceptions to the rule that disabled roles should only be for disabled actors, and the theory of everything may well be one of them, partly because the film focuses on Stephen Hawking's life before and after he developed ALS. I also find it really important when we think about a lot of the excuses Hollywood gives as to why they're opting for cisgendered people playing trans individuals or able-bodied actors portraying characters with disability. First, there's the practical and economic reason. It denies trans individuals and it denies disabled individuals the opportunity for a job, for resources, and Ultimately, it just hurts the entire community. Second, having disabled actors or having trans actors play these roles allows for a more informed, subtle, authentic performance. And in the end, it kind of just makes for better art, which is the point, I believe. When we think about the purpose of art, isn't it to hold a mirror up to society and reflect truth? And if the script of a movie is written by able-bodied people and the film is directed by an able-bodied individual, in what ways can we be certain that the story that is being told is authentic or genuine? To me, it isn't really enough to say, well, isn't that the point of acting? playing a role that isn't necessarily who you are in real life. And 
While that might have been true years and years and years ago, I find that our attitudes toward disability and transness should surpass the praise and applause that mimicry allows for. People seek truth. There are enough films out there that allow audiences to escape reality. So when we see representations of minority groups being played by the majority, while it may not be harmful to able-bodied individuals or cisgendered individuals, it speaks volumes to the audience it so claims to represent. Furthermore, while the side of the argument has some legitimacy to it, the point is not to ban able-bodied actors from playing or portraying characters with disabilities, but the point is there just needs to be more representation and there needs to be more equity in the opportunity for disabled actors to portray themselves. I think that what people want now is to feel seen, to feel accurately represented. And the best way that we can do that is one, to have more representation out there, period, but two, to acknowledge the importance of having disabled actors play characters with disabilities, and to acknowledge the importance of having trans actors playing trans characters. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know a lot of this could be considered a hot take, but I hope that you guys engage with me in these conversations and future ones to come. So. That's kind of all I have to say for this episode. Let me know what you guys would like to hear in the future.